Thank you. So yes, it's Bosch Connected Devices and Solutions in Reutlingen, and uh, we're going to talk about Trust Domain Development Kit, which is our Swiss Army knife of IoT Sensoric. The LoRa extension for that, because we are able to hook on different uh, extensions like a LoRa module. Tracy, which is a sensor for uh, customer sites and agriculture. And a parking lot sensor, PLS, which is also unique in the market. OK, what can we do for you? We started in 2015 to develop a prototyping tool for professional uses. So with housing, with mounting blade, because I always say, what do you want to do with your acceleration data if you don't bring it to the, to the PCB? So you have to have a proper housing, you have to have a mounting plate to, to do that. The next thing was we found out people do not use it only for prototyping. They use it for, as a pro, uh, um, universal programmable sensor device, like a PLC in industrial automation. And that's what we find out. And then, of course, we realized not everybody wanted to, to program the thing. They wanted to use it uh, with ready-made solutions. And so we set up a marketplace. We are on the way to open it for third party as well for our integrators. And now we are able to sell ready-made solutions to the market based on the XDK hardware. So that is not a story what we are talking about. That is that big, long tail that means we talk about 5,000 pieces where we can go to a derived project with a big team and financial resources and all that. That's where we all want to do. But that is reality. Everything begins with one, with, with only one, um, with one device on the desk of the developer. That's reality. And we have a big barrier. And this barrier we have to overcome because a um, dedicated uh, development is just over 5,000 pieces worth to do it. So how we, can we get over that barrier? That's easy. With 500 pieces, that's that. That's 70% of all IoT projects. We are able to have an extension board for that. We can calculate that with you together at about 500 pieces. And then we come over that barrier with just XDK from one up to the whole customer journey, up to 5,000, to maybe a dedicated sensor development for your needs. Peter, any questions to that? I had a question to the last slide. The last um, slide. Yep. Oh, it's built. Yep, that, 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 one. that one. The XDK node, do you have one with you? Can you show us? Yes, of course. Very handy. Yeah, Thank you. of course. <laughs> OK, next slide. That is what is in. Digital light sensor, pressure sensor, temperature sensor, humidity sensor, magnetometer, gyroscope, accelerometer, and the microphone. So everything what Bosch can do in his factory, and we do it 5 million a day, so 1.6 billion a year. So in each car, there are, in general, five Bosch sensors already built in. In each smartphone, a half. That's what we do. And that's what we packed all in that thing. And we put everything together. We have a community. We have 4,500 developers in that community. We do that for a professional purpose. We have connectivity, uh, BLE and Wi-Fi, and we have a free programmable ARM Cortex-M3 in that. And we deliver also the whole tool chain with the device. And we have a rapid prototyping uh, new language, which is called Meta. We developed that and gave it to the Eclipse Foundation as an open source project to lower the entrance barrier of plain C programming. So that means all the Java programmers are able to program that, and they like it. And uh, of course, we are able to hook on different things, like you see on the link cards over there on the tables or on that uh, thing. We, can, we are able to hook on LoRa, for example. That's what we do. OK, what use cases do we have? 
That is a partner of us, our integrator, Apropos. They used XDK and a LoRa extension for a particle measuring station. So all the other sensors as well, like humidity, temperature, and also, and then they hooked on a third party particle sensor on that. The next thing is, we have a current sensor from LEM. Just hook it on, take the virtual XDK app out of the, uh, of the app stores, and you can begin. And you will see there is there a ampere meter uh, turning up in the screens, and you are able to use it as an ampere meter as well. So they are endless. That is our distributed landscape all over the world. We are certi certified in all countries which are important, and we do it step by step, more and more countries. OK. That is Sense, Think, Connect, Act. That is the DNA of uh, Bosch Connected Devices and Solutions. Now we hook on LoRa. And now it's even more important to have this thing free programmable because everybody wants to think different. That's the story. And that's why it is a good idea to have a um, generation of the event directly on the edge at the device and you can choose these eight sensors and to bring it to your LoRa backend. And of course, we have a ready-made um, example already in our, um, in our workbench. You just download it and flash it to the XDK, and you will see your data at the backend. You can see that in the workshop just this afternoon over there. What are potential use cases? Home and building automation, industrial monitoring, supply chain management, and of course, smart city with, for example, these um, um, fine dust alert we have in Stuttgart, um, that particle measurement thing. How do you get started? It's easy, take a link card, download the workbench, get a device, and then start. Take that one, that are all our examples, take the LoRa Things network demo, and you are done. You can program that with Meta, as I said, very easy, and then address one of these sensors, and everything is good. Bring it to the Cayenne backend or to TTN, visualize your data, that's easy. Any questions to that? Peter? You've talked about a few uh, applications so far. Um, they, I, was are, I was wondering what is the most outlandish application you have seen built on the XDK? Well, me, for example, I took the XDK on a motorboat and I automated the front nozzle of the boat because it's a pity. You want to have the beer in the shade and the lady in the sun. And if you are on a, on a lake, you have to automate that nozzle in front. And that's what you can do with XDK, because you have a, you have a compass, and you can use two, two uh, GPIOs, pins, to go to the nozzle and to automate the drifting of the boat. That is something what I have done with that thing. Awesome. <laughs> OK. Tracy, that's the next sensor we also have at our booth over there. It is for rough environment. It's IP69K for uh, building site machines or for agricultural machines. What can we do? The main thing is the accelerometer. So we take that one and then we switch on the other things. Like we have an algorithm where we see it's working or it's just parking. We have an algorithm where we can see it's on a forklift, it's on a crane, it's going to be moved away. And if we see that, we invest some uh, power into the GPS and bring the track and trace data to the backend. And now you're able to have a geofencing around your building site to see where your stuff is gone to and whether this is allowed or whether it's going to be stolen. So, of course, that um, brings you um, the operating hour counter, it lowers your costs and increased productivity. I mean, and we have alerts for accident that geofencing thing, or of course, temperatures. The battery lasts three to 10 years, and it's very robust. And that's in. So perfect. The other one is the parking lot sensor that is also unique in the market. There are others from other companies as well. 
But what is unique on that? We have not only a magnetometer, we have also radar, and we have a self-calibrating algorithm. That means nobody, no maintenance at all, no calibration, everything works fine because it's self-calibrating because of these two sensors and a very smart algorithm which is built in. What are potential use cases? E-charging stations, the people do park there, they don't charge their, their electro vehicle, that's what you want to find out. Autonomous car parking, we got connected things which are called cars. And we would like to connect these intelligent smart cars with the free parking space. And that's what we can do if we bring um, the smart sensor in the, in the infrastructure, what we do. And the next thing is, I think there is a huge percentage, I don't know exactly, 30 to 40 percent of the traffic in the cities, they are caused just because of looking for a parking uh, spot. And that is, of course, what we can reduce because we know this one is free, this, this one is occupied, and we can uh, reduce this traffic jam and also, of course, the search time for the, for the user. What do you need? Come to our, to, to our booth and uh, you will get the information. Then we have a nice box where everything is in. For example, um, this stuff, you just have to clean the spot. You bring the two components glue on it, glue it on, and you're done. So that's two minutes. And as I already said, no calibration at all. Thanks a lot. Peter, Rainer any Schroll, Yes. A uh, no question about that last uh, slide. Uh, where, do you, where do you place them in the, in the parking lot? Well, it is placed uh, in the center, of course, and um, it doesn't really matter where it is, because um, even if you park a motorbike, we can detect that. That's possible. If you park right on top of it, it uh, yeah, doesn't matter. Does, it doesn't, doesn't matter. You can, if you bring a motorbike just on the, on the spot, we can detect that, even if it is not covered. Okay. So it's magnetometer. I Perfect. can show it to you with your box you have now in your pocket. <laughs> okay. It's on the, it's on the <laughs> chair, actually. Um, so uh, what if we want to start working with it? What do we need to do? You had that, you had that slide, but I think it's important to, to, to get that up to see. Yes, we have, a, we have, a, we have there. a starter package over there. Just come to our booth. That is a box. There is a gateway in. And then you can bring everything to the back end if you need a gateway. Or you can also use TTM. It's also possible and then you see the data in your smart city application. It's very easy. G can we start fiddling in your booth already? So can we, or do we just need to get the stuff and then go home and install everything? Yeah, easy but you can it. talk to our experts. They are there, so they will give you an image what to do and how long does it take and things like that. Okay. Any more questions for Rainer Schmoll? Is there anybody here, by the way, who is using their TDK? XDK. Yeah, there's one. Do you have a question about it? It works fine. <laughs> we didn't do this. <laughs> we didn't if, I, if I start to introduce myself, I always took it out of the pocket and say, do you know that one? And if somebody says yes, then I say, I'm the product manager of that guy. <laughs> That's easier that then way. Then you get free beer? <laughs> <laughs> Not always, but... <laughs> but it sometimes works. Any last questions for Rainer? He's here all day at the booth. So if you... Yeah, yeah sorry. It's a bit dark in the room, but I found you. Short question, um, how does the self-calibration work? Uh, self-calibration is, we have that radar sensor, and we have the magnetometer, and then we have the algorithm. So, and all so we, do it, we do it cyclic. You have to go to the experts, because that's really software algorithm. So um, me as an expert uh, within XDK, that is uh, too high for me. So okay. just come to our booth, okay. they will explain it to you. Thank you. <clears throat> One last question for Rainer. I'm trying to look at all the faces, the hands. No, then please give a warm hand for Rainer Schmoll. Thank you.